Another example we'll be taking a look at throughout this talk and trying to solve is dining philosophers. So you've got five philosophers. This is a classical problem in operating systems. You've got five philosophers each sitting at a table, and each of them has a fork. Okay, so they have a fork next to them, um, to their left and to the right, and you need two forks to eat. So in order to grab it, each philosopher has to grab both the fork on the left and the fork on the right. So the question is, what happens if all of them grab the left fork at the same time? So if this one grabbed this, so the philosopher, one philosopher, second philosopher got this, third philosopher got this, fourth one got this, and then fifth one, then you, got, you land up in deadlock because none of them can eat because there is no philosopher with two forks in the hand. So the way you would fix this deadlock is if you force one of them to give up the fork. So for example, if you take the fifth guy and made him force him to give up the fork, and so the first guy got the fork, then the first guy now has both the left fork and the right fork, and he can eat. Okay. So eventually one of them will get a chance to eat. So another way of preventing the deadlock from happening is to never let the philosopher take the last fork if no hungry philosopher has two forks afterwards. So when you go along the table, the first guy grabs this fork, the second one's allowed to grab this one, the third one's allowed to grab this one, the fourth one is allowed to grab this one. But the fifth guy, if he grabs this, then no philosopher will have two forks. So the system lands up in a deadlock. So at that point, you detect it and you prevent the fifth person from acquiring the fork that would prevent the first person from eating. So this ensures a, a, a way to prevent the deadlock itself from happening. So you kind of get to this point at which you may have deadlock and just right at that point, you stop it from happening. Make the circular, you prevent the circular weight from happening. Okay. Necessary conditions for deadlock. Okay, so the, this means that all these conditions uh, need to hold in order for deadlock to happen. Even if one of them is broken, then you don't have deadlock. And we look at um, what these conditions are and then how can we prevent them. Okay. So first one is mutual exclusion. Uh, this is fundamentally important in the sense that only one process at a time can use a resource. If multiple processes can use a resource at the same time, then there is no possibility of deadlock and no one is blocking on anyone else. All of them are left to use the resource at the same time. Right? The next one condition is hold and wait. A process may hold resources while waiting for other resources. If this is not, if this is broken, again, deadlock cannot happen because if you're never holding resources until you have all the ones you care about, then you kind of obtain all the resources in an atomic fashion. You got either all of the resources or none of it. In such cases, again, deadlock cannot happen because if you got all the resources, you can finish. And if you got none of the resources, then there's someone out there who can possibly get all the resources, in which case they can finish. The third condition is no preemption. So resources cannot be forcibly removed from a process. If this was allowed, again, similar to a preemptible versus non-preemptible resource case, we will not have deadlock. So if you allow the processes to relinquish resources or we can allow, we can forcefully grab from them, in which case it's possible for us to forcefully grab all the resources needed by some process and hence allow it to complete. Finally, um, the circular weight case where we, which we've been looking at for the last two examples. So if a circular processes exist such that each process holds at least one resource needed by the previous process, then you have a circle. So you have some case where you have a loop in your resource graph. In such case, we look at what resource graph is in a second. So in such cases, um, there is a part, there does occur deadlock because it's, you have a case of circular weighting. Right? So if you can prevent circular weight, then again, we can break deadlock. Note that these are all necessary conditions. That is, all these conditions need to hold in order for you to have deadlock. If one of these conditions breaks down, you don't have deadlock. The way to handle deadlock is 
is they give you the three steps in which you can handle it. One is just prevention. So make sure one of the conditions uh, necessary to create a deadlock can occur. So the four conditions we spoke about, hold and wait, mutual exclusion, no preemption, circular wait. Make sure that one of those conditions don't happen and you know, hence you prevent deadlock from happening. The second way to handle deadlocks is by detection, where you have a resource allocation graph or some algorithm known as banker's algorithm for detecting potential deadlock, deadlocks that may happen. And in such cases, if you detect there's a potential for deadlock, then you prevent that resource allocation from happening so that you don't land up in deadlock. Okay? And finally, there's recovery where you let the deadlock happen, you monitor the system periodically to detect the deadlock, and you break the deadlock when necessary. So you don't interfere with the normal operation of the system, but you only prevent, uh, you detect it uh, lazily and recover from it when needed. So let's take a first, take a look at deadlock prevention techniques. So we're gonna look at, we had four conditions, four necessary conditions, mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption, circular wait. So you're gonna try to look at how do we prevent each of these. So with mutual exclusion, the first approach is you just pool everything. Right? So you just make sure you get everything, um, and you you don't exclude. You just you handle all of the operations at once. Okay. Hold and wait says you request all the resources initially. So all the resources that you may want for doing your task, you you ask for all of them up front, and you don't get to ask for more resources as you're going along. No preemption. Uh, the obvious, take the resources away forcibly. And finally, circular weight can be prevented by ordering the resources. So imagine if you gave resources names and numbers. Right? So you gave each resource a number one, two, three, four, five. And you enforce the rule that each of these resources can have to be strictly acquired in, the, in their naming. So if you ask for resource one, only then can you ask for resource two, and three, and four, and so on and so forth doesn't mean you got to ask for all of them. It just means that if you want to resource one, two, and five, then you ask them for the order one, two, and five. This ensures that there's never the case that um, we'll have circular waiting where I hold a resource and I'm asking you for it and you're holding a resource that I want. Right? This can never happen because all of us acquire things in order. So if I'm at a certain resource, I probably will not going back. I'll never go back and ask for an order. Or lower number of resources. 